Hello, I'm Richard Jack Smith of Real Talk Movie Reviews. Thor Ragnarok from 2017. What an exciting picture and there was a good soundtrack to go with it too by composer Mark Mothersbaugh. I also enjoyed his work on Holmes and Watson. Before I look closer at Thor Ragnarok and its music, I wanted to discuss a little bit about Patrick Doyle's work on the first Thor and Brian Tyler's work on Thor The Dark World. Regarding Doyle's contribution, I found it rather safe and generic. It wasn't anything we hadn't heard a million times before. As for Tyler's work on the sequel, well, there were so many crescendos, climaxes, throughout the entire experience. They tended to cancel each other out, and apart from one or two good moments, it was rather an underwhelming effort, at least for me. Now, with Thor Ragnarok, we come to an interesting little debate, if you like. Um, when I go online and I look at highly praised scores. There's a lot of love for John Powell's work, oddly enough, uh, with Solo, the How to Train a Dragon films, and especially the Call the Wild. Personally, I find him to be a vastly overrated composer. He's no John Williams. And so groupthink tends to be a rather convenient way for people to just gather together and pick on those who don't agree with them. If you don't agree with me, that's fine. So, regarding Thor Ragnarok, I felt the hype was justified. This is a very vivid and creative score. And Mother's Bow sets out his mission statement boldly in Ragnarok Suite. Now this isn't quite at the level of Dar the Hero from Robert Folk's Beastmaster 2 Through the Portal of Time, nor is it a gargantuan creative behemoth on the level of Chariot Race from Carl Davis's Ben-Hur, but it's still a very creative, imaginative and just an overall exhilarating experience. And this is something that continues throughout the album and with well over an hour of music there are very few dead spots. Only Parade came across as hokey and Grand Master Jam Session had some voices which were just a little bit indulgent, but I'll forgive it that. Mother's Bow applies electronics in a kind of a retro way, and I like that. I like electronics, I, I enjoy various John Carpenter efforts, especially Big Trouble Little China, Assault and Precinct 13, and even The Thing. A lot of the music for The Thing by Ennio Morricone went unused, and Rather ironically, Morricone won an Academy Award for The Hate for Late, which had a lot of the unused pieces from the thing in it, but I digress. So, with Thor Ragnarok, Mother's Bow, for me, transcends both Tyler and Doyle's efforts, those two probably being about two out of five stars, in my view. With Thor Ragnarok, I am very happy to give this four out of five stars, it's, like I say, an energetic effort which uses electronics in a way that are bold and expansive. And this really ties into, I think, a lot of the nostalgia for the 80s. Like I say, I am a huge Vangelis fan and Queen, who uh, I imagine, um, well, I read about them possibly being used for the soundtrack, but ultimately the director uh, Taika Waititi uh, settled upon Mark Mothersbow and this is one of his best efforts along with Holmes and Watson and I highly recommend it. This week's mini review Wish Dragon by Philip Klein. Well composed for the most part although thematically things remain unclear Influences rise to the surface including Thomas Newman, Alan Silvestri, James Horner and James Newton Howard. So Wish Dragon doesn't soar as I hoped it would, yet it's decent fare with some replay value. In Teapot Battle I can detect the influence of Jerry Goldsmith, Brian Tyler, Hans Zimmer and a few others. Now I like Wish Dragon, there's charm in the proper proportions. Sometimes the presentation reminded me of other composers, yet it's a stone skip at best. Those who demand a strong or memorable theme 
might cast a black mark against West Dragon. Personally, I'm a little more forgiving because Klein crafts his music with a sense of whimsy and professionalism. Although he runs the risk of imitation at certain junctures, there's enough nostalgia to keep the faith. Overall, Wish Dragon plays to the familiar strengths of its genre, yet does so with confidence and wisdom. Three out of five stars. For more film and soundtrack reviews, please visit Betty Jo Tucker's website, Real Talk Movie Reviews. On Facebook, you can find my pages, Hypnotic Movie Reviews and Hypnotic Soundtrack Reviews. I am Richard Jack Smith. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.